What's up everybody, I'm Hoops and Hip Hop, and today we are doing a video that many of you have been requesting over the past several weeks, and that would be 10 odd facts about the Pokemon manga. Now I assume all of you know how this Odd Facts series works, but if you're new to the channel and this is your first video of mine, first of all, thank you for watching. Second of all, these videos are all about specifying some odd, quirky, or weird facts about something specific in the Pokemon world. And today we are going to be talking about the Pokemon manga. Of all odd things to happen in the Pokemon universe, many of those odd things come from the manga because the manga is a bit of a free-for-all. That is really what inspired me to do a whole entire video on this subject because as I was doing videos on other subjects like trainer characters, gym leaders, champions, etc., I was finding some really interesting facts about those specific characters that came from the manga so I just decided to look at the manga as a whole and see what I could find and well, uh, I found a lot. So why don't we go ahead without any further ado and just check out some odd facts about the Pokemon manga. Starting with the most prominent Pokemon manga series, in the Pokemon Adventures manga, almost every protagonist to date has started with a starter Pokemon other than the ones that are traditionally available in the games, with the exception of Emerald, who is a manga-exclusive character, White, who is the counterpart of Hilda, and Blake, who is the counterpart of Nate. Also in the Pokemon Adventures manga, it is mentioned by Red that Pokemon are actually known by different names in different locations across the world. And this is meant to reference the fact that in our own world, Pokemon are also known by different names in different locations across the world, depending on the language of the game that you're playing. Speaking of Red, Red's birthday is specified in the Adventures manga as August 8th, and coincidentally, or perhaps not coincidentally, this is also the day when the very first volume of the Pokemon Adventures manga was released. Aside from the Pokemon Adventures manga though, there are also other several spin-off type of Pokemon mangas, and one of those is the Pokemon Pocket Monsters manga. Aside from being the very first Pokemon manga ever published, it's also one of the more noteworthy ones because it stars Red and an eccentric Clefairy to say the least. Even if you've never read this manga before, you've probably seen it pop up around the internet because it stars, as I said earlier, a very eccentric Clefairy that is able to not only talk in English, but also pulls off some extremely wacky faces, and in general, this manga is just very, very weird. And remember how I mentioned that the Pokemon manga is a sort of free-for-all? Well, the Pokemon Pocket Monsters manga is like an extreme free-for-all because many of the rules of the Pokemon world do not apply the same way in the Pokemon Pocket Monsters manga that they do everywhere else. Case in point, evolution. Evolution is very different in this particular manga because not only can Pokemon evolve at any time they want to, they are also able to reverse their evolution, kind of like Digimon, I guess, and it's also been seen in the manga that Pokemon such as Charmander are able to skip evolutions, skipping over from Charmeleon and evolving straight into Charizard. Going further down the rabbit hole in the weird Pokemon manga spin-off category, we actually have another Pokemon manga spin-off that I've actually briefly touched on once before on the channel, and that would be the Magical Pokemon Journey manga, or as it's known in Japan, the Pocket Monsters PPP Adventures manga. Now, if the weird Japanese name of this manga didn't get you, maybe the plot of it will, because the basic plot of this manga centers around a girl named Hazel, who is trying to obtain a love potion from a scientist named Grandpa, because she has a crush on another character named Almond, and she is trying to get said love potion by doing some Pokemon field research for the scientist Grandpa guy. And if that wasn't odd enough for you, we also have the fact that most of the characters in this manga are actually named after nuts for some just inexplicable reason. We have Hazel, we have Almond, we have Peanut, we have Cashew, we have Pistachio, we have Walnut, and we have Coconut, which isn't technically a nut, but you get the idea. And if you thought we were done with this weird Pokemon PPP manga, well, you would be wrong, because I actually have another follow-up fact about this manga to share that really just cements this manga in particular as the strangest thing in the entire Pokemon franchise, because the fifth volume of this manga, which is known as Going Coconuts, is by far the most expensive volume in the entire series to buy secondhand, with prices ranging anywhere from $130 to $65. $500. And to boot, it's unknown why this particular volume of the manga is so much more expensive than the rest of them. 
Once again, moving from one Pokemon spin-off manga to another, we're now going to be talking about the Pokemon Diamond and Pearl Adventure manga, or more specifically, a character within that manga, and that would be Hareta. Now, Hareta is, for all intents and purposes, a counterpart to the male player character from the Diamond and Pearl games, Lucas. However, there are some distinct differences between the two, including the fact that Hareta is the adopted grandson of Professor Rowan. Oh, and by the way, he just happens to casually own a Regigigas, you know, uh, no big deal. Moving back to the main Pokemon Adventures manga, we're actually now going to be taking a look at a counterpart to the female player character from Diamond and Pearl Dawn, and that would specifically be Platinum, or as she's known by her full name in the manga, Platinum Burlitz. Now, you might be thinking to yourself that it's kind of weird that a main character in Pokemon, more specifically one that is a counterpart to player characters from the games, would have a last name. However, it goes much, much deeper than just that. In the Pokemon Adventures manga, Dawn, aka Platinum Burlitz, is part of the Burlitz family, which is a very, very rich and powerful family in the Sinnoh region that is dated back over 200 years. Her family has tons of wealth and economic power within the region and owns several businesses and grand hotels all throughout Sinnoh. Who'd have thought? Oh, and by the way, there was one more thing I wanted to mention about the Burlitz family, just to give you an idea of how truly powerful they are in the manga, and that's that they actually also participated in something known as the Rayquaza Capture Project, which is very much like it sounds because it was an attempt to capture Rayquaza, and it actually involved the Devon Corporation, among several other groups in Hoenn. Speaking of player characters with last names, Platinum is not the only one to hold this unique feature, because Y, the manga counterpart to Serena, actually has one herself. In fact, her full name is Yvonne Gabena. And finally, to round off this video, we're going to talk about one of the more odd, but definitely the most controversial Pokemon spin-off manga, and that would be the Electric Tale of Pikachu manga. Now, the reason why this manga was so controversial is because the original Japanese version was actually very, very, very suggestive and sexual for being a manga based on a children's video game franchise. Now, I'm not going to show any of the images or pages from the Japanese version of the manga in this video because I don't want YouTube to flag me, and I do also like to try and keep it family friendly, so if you want to know for yourself, just Google Electric Tale of Pikachu Japanese version or something like that. But basically, the gist of it is, is that there were a lot of very suggestive and sexual scenes in this manga that had to be very heavily edited in order to come over to America, because obviously Pokemon in America and in Japan too to an extent, that's why this is so weird, is marketed toward kids. To give you an idea of just how suggestive this manga was, it actually had to be edited a little bit in Japan itself from the original Koro Koro publications to the standalone publications, and there was even one scene from the manga that was just completely cut altogether, which involved, believe it or not, a naked Misty. Just full-on naked Misty. Now, obviously, I can't show that here, and whether or not you want to go look that up for yourself is your own decision, but I just wanted to report on it either way, because as far as Pokemon goes, and as far as the Pokemon manga goes, this is about as odd and controversial and interesting as it can possibly get. And there we have it, everybody. Now, I really appreciate you guys requesting this video so much because it really lets me know that you guys are really enjoying this series. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and I would really like to hear more suggestions from you on what you would like to see in this series in the future. If you guys did enjoy the video, be sure to give it a like and let me know down in the comments below which one of these facts you found the most interesting or if there's another fact you know of that's interesting that I didn't mention that you would like to share. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe for more Pokemon content every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. It's going to be a great time on the channel with Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee coming out next week. And I would also like to ask you guys to please check out my Let's Play because I'm going to do a Let's Play of Let's Go Pikachu. It's going to be the first one I've ever done on this channel and I am just really excited for it. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So I would love to see you guys there for those videos. Also, if you like Pokemon music and Pokemon remixes, please check out my Spotify because I have like 
tons of my Pokemon remixes there. You can listen to them anytime, anywhere, and it really helps me out and helps to support the channel as well. With all of that being said, though, I will be back for another video on Thursday, so be sure to hit that notification bell so you can be notified as soon as it goes live. And with all of that being said, you know I love you guys, and until then, as always, I will smell you guys later.